This might be my fourth video on the Brooklyn Nets in the last week and a half, but I think this might be the last one for a little bit because I don't know how much longer they can keep this up, but it's officially at a nine game winning streak. My purpose of all these videos recently has been because the media seemingly only talks about the Brooklyn Nets when things are going bad, when they have things to say about Kyrie Irving, when they have things to say about Kevin Durant and his decision to go to Brooklyn. I thought it'd be interesting to talk about them when nobody else wanted to talk about them, when they were winning games and when they were climbing the standings in the Eastern Conference. Now, earlier in all these videos, I was given a lot of the Kevin Durant MVP stats and why Kyrie Irving's been underrated. I'm going to give more about the totality of why this is so interesting to me. If you want to see more about stats and see why this team is, you know, what they've been doing these last couple of weeks, you can go to some of my past videos. But for this video, I want to talk about the fact that, one, this was the most important part of the schedule. The Brooklyn Nets are now 22-12 and 12 on a nine-game winning streak, and they're only two games, yes, two games, out of first place, right behind the Bucks and the Celtics. Now, the reason this was so important to talk about was because before when I first made a video, and I think they were at like a six game winning streak, but they were at a pretty like, you know, like nine out of or nine out of 11 games, some crazy number. Everyone was talking about the schedule. They beat the Pistons and the Wizards and the Pacers and the Hornets, whatever. And I said the most important thing coming up is the Warriors game, even though Steph Curry is not playing. Uh, the game against the Bucks and the game against the Cavs. The Bucks and the Cavs were the third and second seed in the Eastern Conference. And they just jumped the Cavs to be the third seed after beating them. They beat the Bucks by 18 the day before Christmas Eve. And now yesterday, on December 26th, they beat the Cavs 125 to 117 on the road. Another convincing, important win for a team like this. And they're just they're just on fire. I mean, there's not many ways to explain it. Uh, they are now at nine consecutive games. They're f- they're 15 and two in their last 17 games. So forget just a nine game winning streak, but over a 17 game pace, they're at 15 and two. And then last night you have Kyrie and Kevin Durant just showing that this is what they signed up for, right? And it's been kind of bad luck with injuries and there's been drama on and off the court with this Brooklyn Nets team with Kevin Durant wanting a trade with the Kyrie Irving suspension and comments that he's made. But nobody wants to talk about him now that they're playing great against the Cleveland Cavaliers. Kyrie had 32 points, making 7 out of 11 three-pointers, while Durant also went 5 for 8 from 3 with 32 points. They once again combined for 64 points. And throughout this, you know, nine and nine game winning streak and this 15 and two streak, they've been doing this a lot. They've been combining for 80 points and 75 and 60 something. And they're just going off like crazy. And it's electric basketball that they're playing. The Brooklyn Nets against the Cleveland Cavaliers on the road against a really good Cleveland team who was the three seed before they beat them. They went on an 18 to two run. In the end of the seventh, in the end of the second quarter, to you know, bring a lead after halftime and really prove how electric, like electric, this team can be, and it's absolutely unbelievable how good their potential is. And on top of that, you got to look at some of the statistics. Now, I mentioned this in my last video: the Royce O'Neal trade when Kevin Durant requested a trade, and then they went to Utah and got Royce O'Neal for pretty much nothing was one of the most underrated moves of the offseason because he's great defensively and is a great piece to this team. You have Ben Simmons is leading the team in assists, which is exactly what you want. I know he's not as good as James Harden. I know it's not necessarily the a perfect trade or a perfect situation, but James Harden was not the right fit for this Nets team, and a guy like Ben Simmons can be. He can be the guy that gets you 10 points, 10 rebounds, and 10 assists, and he's done it a couple times. And overall, they just have a really good lineup now. When you have Kyrie playing the way he's playing, Ben Simmons playing decent, Kevin Durant playing good, Nick Nick Claxton is playing amazing, Royce O'Neal is playing amazing. Uh, Off the bench, you have guys like Seth Curry, Joe Harris. He's hurt the second, but he'll be playing. Um, You have Patty Mills. And then there's a couple guys I want to talk about because there's a couple specific guys that I guess don't get really talked about. And I'm going to say it slowly because I always say it wrong. It's Yuta Watanabe. <laughs> I would never know how to say it correctly, but it, it, you know who I'm talking about. Um, 
he's been okay off the bench. Last five games, been playing 21 minutes uh, and, and doing all right. I mean, playing 21 minutes a game, averaging 8.6, two rebounds and an assist, and shooting 60% from three in those last couple of games. So he's been kind of, you know, a guy who's just rocketing up shots and they're going in. And then the biggest sleeper who they got for the minimum was TJ Warren. Let's not forget Bubble Warren. Bubble TJ Warren used to go off. Um, and he's playing good right now for uh, the Brooklyn Nets. The last five games, he's playing 19 minutes. And he's remember, he's really getting back into it now. 12 points per game, 4.4 rebounds, and two assists pretty much. Uh, shooting 46% from three. The guy was one of the sneakiest minimum pickups you could possibly have in the NBA. And he's a big part to this. And I saw this tweet by Jack Manuel. I'll put it on the screen. It said, Kyrie is the king of the fourth. KD is the best player in the world. Claxton and Ben are the joint defensive player of the year. TJ is the best minimum signing ever. Utah is a flamethrower, and the Nets are coming for that one seed. And it's pretty accurate. This team is hard to be stopped right now. And I, I wouldn't be shocked if they maybe extend this a couple more games. There's going to be a point where they're not going to win 15, 20 games. And if they do, I'm going to be keep making videos because this is impressive. But tomorrow they play the Hawks and they got the Hornets, then the Spurs, Bulls, Pelicans, uh, Heat, Celtics. So they have a couple games, you know, that's not easy games against the Pelicans or the Heat, Bulls, Celtics. There's there's some games the Hawks are a decent team. There's some games coming up where they might actually finally potentially be in a spot where they might not, you know, have an easy 15-game winning streak. But this team has been extremely impressive. As of right now, to me, Kevin Durant is the MVP of the entire NBA. I know a lot of people will say Jokic or Jason Tatum. What what Durant's been through and had to deal with throughout the years. And I'm not saying whatever, forget what happened with Kyrie. He still has to deal with it. Whether you agree or disagree, he still has to deal with the fact that Kyrie's getting suspended and there's a lot of media coverage. But they're now here. And this is the team we've been waiting for. And let's just keep seeing if they can win games. I'm just going to continue to make videos because they're winning games. And let's see what happens. Uh, do you think they're contenders? Because I do. And there's one other part. There's no one likes to talk about the good part of Kyrie. So I want to add this. I know he's gotten a lot of hate recently for his comments, his suspension, all this. And everybody never wants to talk about the good side of the Nets. Like I said, the media is silent because the Nets are good. But let one little tiny thing happen and the media will be all over it. But Kyrie, after the game in Cleveland last night at Rocket Mortgage, Rocket Mortgage uh, Fieldhouse, that's what it's called, he was signing about every autograph and took almost every photo on the way out of the stadium. And I'll play the video here, but Kyrie's not a bad person. So people need to let go of this Kyrie stuff. Let the man play basketball and root for this team because it's a cool team to watch and they're kicking ass right now. Uh, I do think this is the team that's going to win the NBA Finals. Now, I got a bunch of Brooklyn Nets videos on my page. I'm not even a Brooklyn Nets fan. I'm rooting for them right now because I kind of like what this team's up to, but like... They're impossible not to talk about. They're the hottest team in basketball, and I think they are the best team in basketball. And this is what the Nets have been waiting for for the last, I don't know, three years. So let's see if they can keep it up. But right now, I say look out, world. The Nets are coming. I'm Sammy on tap, S-A-M-I on tap. And I appreciate you listening. Peace.